Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Android Dagger for Professionals tutorial. My name is Vasily, I am a professional software engineer. In this video I will show you how to implement dependency injection architecture pattern in Android using Dagger 2 dependency injection library. The approach that I am going to show you is production ready and tested design, not some artificial or simplified example. This approach can be used in projects of any size and scales easily as projects evolve from small prototypes to full-blown applications. In order to fit this tutorial in a reasonable amount of time, I am forced to assume that you have a basic understanding of dependency injection and dagger. Links to my articles that can provide the required background can be found in the description for this video. Before we begin, I would like you to know that it took me several years of trial and error to come up with this implementation. You are going to learn it in less than one hour. Let's start. The application that we are going to work on is a template project. Some time ago I noticed that all my Android projects end up having many similarities. Therefore I decided to write a template that will capture these similarities and make it easy to bootstrap new applications in the future. Currently this template application has just one example screen with a single button. Clicking on this button will cause a simple dialog to be shown. Nothing fancy here. The activity that corresponds to this screen is example activity. Note how the collaborator objects are being instantiated in onCreate method. In this tutorial, I will show you how to refactor the responsibility of objects construction into a standalone set of classes, which I call construction set. Before we can use Dagger in our project, we need to import the required external dependencies. For this, open modules build gradle file and add the required dependencies. Afterwards, sync the project. The main feature of proper implementation of dependency injection is complete separation between functional and construction sets of classes. On a micro level, this separation means that each class should contain either functional logic or logic that instantiates other objects and wires them together, but not both. On a macro level, the same restriction applies to packages. This means that we should have a standalone package for dependency injection related code. Open the application's root package and create here a new package named, surprise, surprise, dependency injection. The highest scope of dependency injection in Android is application, so create a new package called application. I will pause the recording now and implement the classes related to injection in application scope. Afterwards, I will resume the recording and we will review this code together. The code is ready, let's review it. Dagger, like most other dependency injection frameworks, supports injection of global services. In order to mark services as global, Dagger uses a predefined singleton annotation. I think that the name of this annotation is misleading, therefore I define the new scope annotation called application scope. It is functionally equivalent to singleton, but has a more expressive name. Application module contains declaration of the services that can be injected. This is also known as object graph. Its constructor takes in a single argument, the application. This is a bootstrapping dependency. It will be required in order to construct other services. Currently, this module provides just two services. The application that was injected at construction time and the logger. Both of these services are annotated with application scope annotation, which means that both of them are global. Notice that the method that provides application always provides the same object. Therefore, it is not really mandatory to annotate it with application scope. Nevertheless, I strongly advise to explicitly annotate all methods that provide global objects, 
even if their internal implementation always provides the same object. This adds expressiveness and improves the readability of the code. Always annotate methods that provide global objects with scope annotation even if the internal implementation ensures that the same object will always be returned make it a little bigger these notes that I will be taking during this tutorial will be later posted to my blog. You can go there and review them. Another important point to note here is that even though application is a subclass of context, application module provides application, but not context. The reason for making this distinction between context and application is that subclasses of context are not interchangeable. This issue is discussed in details in my article titled List of Substitution Principle and Context, link to which can be found in the description to this video. Application module should provide application, but not context. That's all about application module and we can move to application component. Currently, this component does nothing, but it will change in just a few minutes. In order to make use of this newly created application component, we need to instantiate it and assign to a field in our custom application object. I will pause the video now and do it, and then review the code together with you. Time for a code review. What we have here is a field of type application component and a function that lazily assigns this field. I haven't seen a valid use case for dependency injection on a background thread in Android yet. Therefore, I always explicitly annotate dependency injection related methods with UI thread annotation. At this point, we can perform dependency injection using application component. For example, let's log something when this application is started. First of all, we need to declare that application component can inject into my application class. Inside my application, define an injectable field of type mylogger and perform the injection as the very first action in the onCreate method. After injection, the logger is initialized and can be used. At this point, we have application component that is used in order to inject dependencies into my application class. Theoretically, we can use this single component in order to perform injections into activities, fragments, and services as well. However, if we do that, our dependency injection code will quickly become a mess. If we want to avoid this mess and make sure that our dependency injection code is maintainable, we need to define additional Dagger components. In order to organize the presentation layer logic, I use model view controller architectural pattern. In this pattern, activities and fragments are controllers and have very similar functionality. Since the functionality of activities and fragments is similar, it is only logical to use a single dagger component for injection of services into both of them. But even if you organize the presentation layer differently, there is still a very high chance that activities and fragments in your application depend on exactly the same set of services. If that's the case, 
you too should use a single component in order to inject dependencies into activities and fragments. So, in dependency injection package, I create additional package called controller. I will once again pause the recording and write the code, and then we will review the code together. It's time for a code review. Controller module provides the services required by activities and fragments. The constructor of this module takes inactivity as an argument. This is a bootstrapping dependency that must be provided by all controllers. Note how the services provided by this module, Fragment Manager, Dialogs Manager, Dialogs Factory, all of them are related to presentation layer. In fact, since this module needs activity for bootstrapping, it can't even be constructed outside of activity or fragment scope at all. That's the reason why having a separate set of classes for injection into controllers is a good idea. This module provides a context object. Since we did not provide context in application scope, in the scope of each controller, context will always resolve to the corresponding activity. Now let's review the controller component. Currently this component is empty, but not for long. Note that controller component is annotated with subcomponent annotation. This means that this component is derived from another parent component and gets a direct access to parent's object graph. The parent of this subcomponent is application component. This line of code states that an instance of controller component can be obtained from an instance of application component while additionally providing an instance of controller module. I strongly advise to establish components hierarchy using subcomponents. Subcomponents get direct access to parent's object graph, which makes it very easy to maintain dependency injection logic long term. This deserves to be written explicitly. Establish Components hierarchy using subcomponents. And in context of controllers, use a standalone subcomponent in order to inject services into activities and fragments. Controllers related dependency injection code is complete and we can finally use dependency injection in order to remove objects instantiation logic from example activity. Let's declare that controller component injects into example activity. Inside example activity, we need to add a method that instantiates controller component. That's the method. Contrary to what we did with application component, controller component is not assigned to a field. The reason why we don't need to assign controller component to a field is because it is not used in order to declare global services. Therefore, it is used only once for injecting dependencies into controllers and then it can be disposed of. Once we have this, we can have the controller component inject dependencies into activity as the very first action in onCreate, remove the manual instantiation logic, and annotate the services as injectable. That's basically all. Let's ensure that the application still works by running it. Click on a button, see dialog, close the dialog. Everything works. Very good. There is, however, one small refactoring that I still want to make. Note that getController_component method is not specific to example activity. This method would look exactly the same in any other activity in the application. It doesn't make sense to repeat this code in every activity. Therefore, I like to push it up into the base activity class. This way, it will be available to all the activities in my application. 
right click the method name, choose refactor, pull members up. We want to move get controller component method into base activity. Right, refactor. Now this method resides in base activity and all other activities in my application will be able to use it. As we discussed earlier, controller component injects services into activities and fragments. We took care of activities, but what about fragments? In order to inject services into fragments, the same method that we had just added to base activity should be added to base fragment class as well. So copy the method. Go to base fragment and pass it here. Import all the required dependencies and we will need to change the code a bit. Right, get activity and get activity. Great. Now get controller component method is also available to all the fragments in the application. Since all the dialogues that I use in my applications extend dialog fragment, they are technically fragments too. Therefore, this code that I just copied into base fragment should also be copied into dialog into base dialog. Alright, import all the required dependencies. And now get controller component method also available to all the dialogues in my application. In order to perform dependency injection into Android services, I will define another subcomponent of application component and name it service component. Since service component is very similar to controller component, I will not waste your time on showing the same process again. You can see the resulting code on GitHub. Let's just write it down. Use a stand standalone sub component of application component in order to inject into Android services. As the application progresses and grows, the amount of services being injected will be growing too. Having all these services provided by a single module will make the code of that module a mess. In order to avoid this mess, I advise you to group services in multiple modules by functionality and then make the components depend on more than a single module. In order to demonstrate this approach, I will define additional module in application related dependency injection logic. Alright, let's review the code. In application package, I added additional module called settings module. This module provides one additional service, settings manager. The interesting thing to note here is that settings manager depends on application, but there is no method that provides application in this module. What's going on? This will work because Dagger shares the object graph between all the modules defined in a single component. So, application component now depends on settings module and application module. This means that the services provided by application module are available to settings module too. And since application modules provides application, settings module can depend on application without explicitly declaring a method that provides it. This is a great example where using convention over configuration rule simplifies the design a lot. As your application evolves and more and more services need to be injected, divide these services into modules by functionality and make your components depend on multiple modules. This way you can scale up your object graph without compromising readability and maintainability of dependency injection code. This is a good advice to have in writing. Divide related services into modules and make components depend, depend on multiple modules at a time. 
and a reminder that services provided by a module are available to all other modules in the same component. Before I conclude this tutorial, I would like to give several general advices. General advice number one. In one of the latest versions of Dagger, a new method of injection in Android was introduced. The official documentation shows this simple code snippet and states two problems associated with it. The first stated problem is copy-pasting. Well, we do have the code that obtains the controller component in three base classes, but I don't think it is code duplication. This is just a method call on a component obtained from application object. You can't really call a single method call a code duplication. Furthermore, the code is not even identical. The way a reference to activity is obtained is different. But even if we stretch the definition of code duplication to apply to this method call, in our approach, no further copy-pasting will ever be required. The second stated problem is somewhat difficult to understand. I myself have never heard of a core principle that states a class shouldn't know anything about how it is injected. In fact, let's take a look at the proposed solution. This class knows perfectly well that it is being injected using a static call to Android injection class. So it is not clear what was the original problem that the author of this code tried to solve. It is also not clear how this code solved that problem. However, the real issue with this new method of injection in Android is not that it doesn't solve any real problem, but that it complicates the already not so simple implementation of the pandas injection. Take a look at this code. I can't see why would anybody use this mixture of new additional classes and generics instead of the very simple and straightforward approach that we used in this tutorial. I had tried very hard to find one single advantage of this new injection method in Android, but as of today, I couldn't find any. Therefore, my advice is not to use this approach at all. This is important, so let's write it down. General advice. Don't use the new injection method using the Android Dagger Android package. Now to general advice number two. There are more features in Dagger than what we used in this tutorial. Features like named injections, lazy injections, multi-bindings and more. Don't use them. You don't need to use features of Dagger other than ones that we used in this tutorial. The structure that I showed you here is simple and can support the needs of application of any size. Features like named injections and multi-bindings essentially delegate parts of application's functionality to construction set. This contamination of construction set with functional logic undermines the main purpose of the dependency injection architectural pattern. Simplicity is a very desirable property of any design, but it is especially true about dependency injection code. If you want your dependency injection logic to be maintainable, keep all these fancy new features outside of your code base. It is a bit more complicated with lazy injections. Very, very rarely there is a real need for lazy injection. But even in these rare cases, don't use Dagger's lazy injection feature. There is a pattern proposed by Mark Seaman called the Corruptor. Google it and use it instead. To summarize this general advice, You don't need fancy daggers features. Use only the ones that were shown in this tutorial. Keep dependency injection code 
simple. General advice, in rare cases where lazy injection is required, use the corruptor pattern. You will often have a question whether a specific service should be injected by application component or controller or service component. The general rule of thumb is that services injected by application components should have one or more of the following three characteristics. The first type of services injected by application component are global services that should be instantiated only once during application's life cycle. The second type of services injected by application component are services that are required for application object itself. The last type of services injected by application component are services which are required by more than one subcomponent of application component. In other words, if some service is required by both activities or fragments and Android services, put it in application component. Let's summarize it in writing. Services injected by application component have at least one of the following characteristics. One, the service is global, right? And should be instantiated only once during applications life cycle. So global services. Two, the service should be injected into application object. Three, the service is required by more than a single subcomponent of application component. Something like this. It is time to conclude this tutorial. In this video, I showed you how to implement dependency injection architecture pattern in Android using Dagger dependency injection framework. The shown approach will provide a solid architectural foundation for applications of any size and allow for easy scaling and maintenance as the project progresses. In addition, we named several features supported by Dagger that should not be used because they complicate the already not so simple implementation. If you like this video, give us a big like and don't forget to both subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our blog. See you next time. Goodbye.